Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Biolapse Motion Control Series. Today we're going to be looking at this. This is an Emotomo Spectrum ST4. This is their flagship product. Uh, a little bit about Emotomo. Um, Motomo is the brainchild of Brian Burling. He's based out of California and they've been operating for about 10 years. The first robots they put out were pretty simple but effective little panty tilt units starting with the PT in 2011 which was pretty solid, but quickly replaced with the TB3, and then the TB3 Black. I had one of those units myself, and it was a great little robot. Unfortunately, mine had to be cannibalized in order to build a macro positioning system. I wanted that neck on it. Um, the ST4 now, this was released in 2016, five years ago, but it really established a motor was placed in the professional world and the market. Many of the design concepts remain the same. It uses a wireless controller, and the brains are inside the pan tilt unit itself. The main reasons, main differences are going from uh, an adreno based processor to an ARM Cortex, I believe. Also, it now comes in a nodal design, which is a, a major jump in quality, but also a major jump in price. But you get a much sturdier and capable system. <clears throat> The control system has always been straightforward with the Motomo, and it is with the ST4. I picked my S uh, Spectrum up in 2018, and I've used the hell out of it the last few years working on BBC's Green Planet. Uh, I've used it in all sorts of environments. I've put, never really put it to the test. Uh, whether it's a 72-hour time lapse out in the field through rain and shine or a three-month capture in my studio, it always performed flawlessly. I've used it when making tutorial videos. Uh, I've used the ping pong feature <clears throat> for interviews. And it's really quiet, even at faster speeds, which is nice. In fact, it's so quiet, you can actually deploy this out in areas with a lot of wildlife without disrupting or spooking the animals. It is that quiet. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the unit. The Emotomo Spectrum ST4 is a four-axis motion control head. Pan and tilt are built in, and there's two additional motor ports to configure this unit to a four-axis system. Seen here with the Emotomo FZ motor and my own home-built slider. Weighing in at 4.5 pounds, it boasts a 15 pound capacity for time lapse and a 12 pound for real time video. It's capable of panning 120 degrees and tilting 60 degrees per second. The compact design fits in an area under 8x8x5 eight by eight by inches. The ST4 features a bright, dimmable OLED display that's perfectly readable in any condition and can be flipped down for inverted use. It features an all metal design machined from aluminum with a nodal pan tilt with an Arca Swiss style clamps. The connections are made on the right side and includes an 8-way joystick, two motor ports, a power input, camera trigger, I.O. port, micro SD slot for firmware upgrades, Bluetooth dongle for the controller, and a USB connection for future integrations. On the left side, it can be outfitted with an optional V-mount or gold mount battery plate. There is no weather sealing on this unit, so it is not recommended to be used in inclement weather. However, my own unit has survived a few light rain showers. Now, Motomo does not have their own slider unit. However, they support integration with iFootage, Dana Dolly, and Mighty Slider. But it also has the ability to run off-the-shelf off motors. So you do it yourself, people. If you have a slider you want to put together and work with this, all you need to do is get the correct uh, connector, which they sell online, and you can make those connections and have this run. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the interface on this and see how it looks. And, and, and we're just going to step through real quick. So once you start, this is the the display that you're going to be seeing and you have several different options right up front live motion program shots photo tools and settings let's go ahead and step through and we're going to take a high level on this so we're not going to go too deep but i will cover all of this in very deep detail in further videos in live motion you'll see that you have these different presets quiet slow time lapse fastest user to find one and two and these are just basically different feels for how the motion how the system feels when it moves with what kind of damping any kind of speed limit so that's quiet fast if we go to quiet slow you'll see that it moves much slower which is actually really nice if you're trying to do macro video work um, and then you have a uh, time lapse and fastest there's a little display under each one or a little uh, blurb about what to expect with it and then user defined one and two which we're going to go over detail in a later episode as well also in here, you can program buttons on the controller to take you to specific positions. So if I lock this in here, and if any time if I hit circle, it'll go to this position. So let's just say I'm going to move out of this position. Let's see. If I hit circle, 
going to move it right back to where it was. Now this is useful if you're shooting a band on stage or any kind of speakers or if you want to get a shot where you can look at the audience and look back at the person and you don't want to have to sit there and control it with your uh, with a, with your hands you can basically mark these positions for circle triangle left three and right three and anytime you hit those it'll position it to that point which is really nice you also have an experimental method of record where you actually control the camera live and it will record it and then you can play it back or you can turn it into a time lapse Let's go ahead and back out. That's pretty much everything under live motion. Let's check out program shots. Now, this takes a philosophy that just kind of steps you through from beginning to end in order to help you set it up. So you don't have to bounce all over the place to get what you want. So on here, let's start with video. You set your starting point. Then you set your ending point. And then on here, you can tell how much time you want it to, uh, how long you want the move to take. You have dwell start, dwell end. All of this, like I said, we'll be going over in further videos. You have um, modifiers such as, you know, any ramp in or out. Do you want to shoot it a ping pong style? Um, are you interested in adding frames? Now, this is for extra key framing, which once again, we'll take a deeper look at later. But you can do up to nine key frames. And that's all just baked in. You don't need anything else in order to do that, which is kind of nice. And then you go hit X and it'll take you to the start and then you can run it. But well, let's go ahead and back up a little bit. And we're going to change this up here from, oops, program shots. We're going to go from video to time lapse. And same thing, you can even, you can even set up the move and go change it from time lapse to video and go back and forth and keep the same move. Now we have, instead of just the overall time, we have what's the interval. And then you have the static time, moving shots, and on the bottom, it'll show you 10 seconds at 24 frames per second or 8 seconds at 30. So it gives you a little extra information. Modifiers on here, you have how many ramp uh, frames you want to ramp, whether or not you want any lead ins or outs. Add frames, once again, if you want to do additional key framing. And then hit X, it'll take you to the start. And then when it's ready, you can just hit square. However, if you are doing the time lapse, you do have the option let me move this back, of pausing it during the time lapse and using an external trigger, which is kind of nice. So that's pretty much it in there. Uh, let's go ahead and move over to photo tools. You have the gigapan and panorama mode and also the 360 shooting mode. We'll be doing tutorials on those as well. And then in settings, this is where you have all your just different settings that you can set up. So you have brightness of the screen. Oops. You can do uh, 1 to 10 for the brightness. You can have it set up to where when it's running that the brightness drops down to whatever you want. You can flip the screen upside down, which if you are going to uh, undersling this thing, it's really nice being able to do that. The slider, now they, there's three different sliders that it already ha is uh, calibrated to work with. So the iFoot is Shark, then you have the Mighty Slider and the Dana Dolly. And this actually changed the presets that you see when you first start in and program moves. And then everything's just kind of calibrated for distances and stuff. However, you don't have to use these three. You can literally use anything that has a stepper motor and just get the right connector adapter. On here, this is uh, if you want to flip around any of the axis, you can reverse them. Uh, this is how you want to set the IO port. You can do external trigger, a Motomo API, or Dragon Frame, or Red Trigger, or TNFZ. We're just going to leave that on Dragon Frame for now. SMS Trigger Time, what to do after the run. You have two different telemetry screens, and these just basically show data coming into it. I think this is probably mostly used for debugging. Uh, if you need a pair of new remote, this is where you do it. And then tuning, this is fine motor tuning for the user to find one and two portions. Uh, we're definitely going to be taking some time looking at that as well because it is uh, really nice having that ability. And then on uh, page 5, you'll see what version of, of uh, the Motomo uh, firmware you're on. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. As you can see, this already has a lot of capability right out of the box. Okay, there's, there's a ton you can do with it, but the great thing is it even offers Dragon Frame support, so you can even do more with it. And you know, we're going to be doing a lot of tutorials on all the features on subsequent videos. But if the question is, can a five year old motion control system still compete against newer options? 
Well, yeah, this can. This is a hell of a system, and it's still one worth looking at. Brian and his team in Omotomo are constantly working on new integration with this unit. It now supports the use of inertia wheels. It also rem supports remote shooting with the scar Hodge Network Control Center. And there are more integrations on the roadmap, so while the ST4 hardware hasn't changed much in the past five years, the processor and the abilities of this were only scratching the surface when it was released and it has developed a multitude of new abilities and continues to find new ways to integrate with the latest tech turning this into a highly flexible and adaptable system so I, I hope you found this to be helpful and if so be sure to give a like and subscribe so you're notified when new content tutorials and reviews are released like i said we're going to be doing a lot of deep dives on this equipment and we're really going to put it to the test and see how well it performs how accurate is it? How fast can it move? How quiet is it? How much more noise does it make? And we're going to do everything we can to stumble this thing up and see if we can get it to uh, throw out some bugs. So, like I said, give us a like, subscribe, and uh, thank you for joining, and have a wonderful day.